So in this video, we're going to go over how to rewrite absolute value functions piecewise. And this is something that you're going to use frequently throughout your calculus courses, because anytime you get started with the function, I'd say 99% of the time, and it involves some sort of absolute value, you're going to um, want to rewrite it piecewise first before you take its limit, find its derivative, or integrate it. So first, let's just recall the definition of absolute value of x. So if f of x is equal to the absolute value of x, then we can rewrite it as x if x is greater than or equal to 0, and negative x or opposite x if x is less than 0. So basically, what this tells us is if you take the absolute value of some number, and say it's already positive, like 3, then taking the absolute value does absolutely nothing. But if you take the absolute value of some number and say it's less than 0, it's negative, taking the absolute value makes it non-negative, makes it positive. Well, what's another way of saying that? That we're going to multiply it by negative 1. We're taking the opposite of it. So we're going to extend this idea now for functions. Um, where we're taking the absolute value of some quantity other than just x. So first example, and all of these, the directions are basically just rewrite them piecewise. It's not really a problem. It's just the beginning part of getting set up. So say we have a function g of x, which equals the absolute value of 5 minus 2x. So the first thing you want to do is figure out where the quantity inside the absolute value changes signs, where it switches from being positive to negative. So to do that, you can either just visually observe where the zeros are or just set the quantity inside equal to zero. So we can see that at x equals five halves, we have um, a zero for five minus two x. So let's think about the graph first. This is just a linear quantity, five minus two x. And just to give a rough sketch of what's going on, my y-intercept is 5, x-intercept is 5 halves, and so we have a line here, negative slope. All right, just make the dot a little bit bigger. Ooh, looks so good. All right, so for this portion of our function, where it's already positive, when we take the absolute value, it's not going to change the output at all. But on the second portion here, from 5 halves to infinity, when we take the absolute value, it's going to make all of the output values or the function values non-negative or positive. So it's going to reflect it over the x-axis. So how do we write that algebraically? Well, wherever the zero is for the quantity inside the absolute value, that's where we're going to split our domain for our piecewise function. So we're going to rewrite this. One portion is going to be for all of the values of x that are less than 5 halves, and the other one is for all of the values of x that are greater than or equal to 5 halves. So now we have to decide which um, portion of the function goes with which portion of the domain. So for x less than 5 halves, we can see that f of x is already positive. So taking the absolute value won't do anything. It'll just be equal to 5 minus 2x. You can also confirm this algebraically. If you just want to plug in a value that lies within this interval, say x equals 0, well then 5 minus 2 times 0, that's already positive. So if you take the absolute value of 5, it's still 5. For x's that are greater than 5 halves, you can look at the graph and see that those values are negative. So when I take the absolute value, it's going to multiply them by another negative in order to make them positive. And again, you can confirm this algebraically if you just want to plug in a value that lies within that interval, like 3. So 5 minus 2 times 3, that's going to be negative 1. So when you take the absolute value, you're going to need to make it positive. And so we're done. So here's my piecewise function representing g of x, which is the absolute value of 5 minus 2x. So basically, when you're working with the absolute value of a linear quantity, all you need to do is figure out where that 0 is for the quantity inside, and then you just split the domain there. It's going to get a little more complicated if you have a quadratic or higher order 
um, quantity inside the absolute value bars. So let's look at how to deal with that scenario. So say we have another function h of x, which equals the absolute value of x squared minus x minus 12. Well, again, we want to start off by finding the zeros of the quantity inside the absolute value bars. So this factors nicely into x minus 4 times x plus 3. We'll set that equal to 0. And we can see that the zeros are at 4 and negative 3. So just like before, I want to know where is this function already positive? Because in that case, taking the absolute value of x squared minus x minus 12 won't change its value. And then where is it negative? Where do I need to multiply it by negative 1? And negative 3 and 4 are going to be where I split the domain for my piecewise function. So two ways you could do this. Easiest way is just by remembering the fact that quadratic functions have the graph. Their graph is a parabola. This one's going to open upwards since the coefficient of x squared is positive. And so the graph has zeros at negative 3 and 4, and it'll look something like this. And I don't really care where the vertex is because I'm just interested in where the parabola is above or below the x-axis. So I can see here from the interval from negative infinity to negative 3, x squared minus x minus 12 is positive. From negative 3 to 4, the parabola is negative. And then from 4 to infinity, x squared minus x minus 12 is positive. So using that information now I can rewrite my absolute value function piecewise. The parabola is already positive when x is less than or equal to negative 3 or when x is greater than or equal to 4. So that means taking the absolute value will not change any of the outputs. So I just rewrite the original quantity. Now on the interval in the middle right here from negative 3 to 4 those are all of my x values where x is less than 4 or greater than negative 3. Well, since the parabola x squared minus x minus 12 is negative there, when I take the absolute value, I will be taking the opposite of all of those function values or making them positive. And then depending on what you need to do with your function, you may want to distribute that negative or not. We could throw in the word if if we want, and then we're done. Now, again, it doesn't matter which inequalities are inclusive and which ones are strict. So I wrote x is less than or equal to 3, greater than or equal to 4, and then this one was a strict inequality. You could also change it up if you want to write it the other way or make any little myth, um, mix match. Like you could do x is less than negative 3 or x is greater than 4 and then make this inequality inclusive. It doesn't matter, but just don't double up any of your x values since this is going to be a function. Okay, so give a couple of these a try on your own and then check back in for part two where we're going to look at even more tricky examples.